5,000 years ago, humans knew that the brain was malleable. It seems like we barely know that today. How do I know that and how can I make that claim? The more I analyze the templates and find out exactly what they are and how they show us how to heal, the more I realize what they're doing is they're having us interact very specifically in mental processes with our memories and thoughts and that that changes things. They knew that the spiritual experience was based in mental processes. And the five things in the beginning, if, if you've been following along, I'll get into that a little bit more. There's five parts of the stories and five parts of the human mental experience that we have to understand in order to do that, in order to interact with ourselves, and moreover, in order to use the material, the stories, the myths, the religions, in order to decode them in a way that we can interact with them. And every bit of what we decode should be interactive. I'm going to suggest to you that the Bible is you can interact with everything in there. None of it is literal, not a bit of it. Every bit of it needs to be interpreted in the same way for consistency. But that is the same way with other material from antiquity. If we interpret every bit of it with the exact same process, no matter how it sounds and no matter where it comes from, we will get to the inner core that is always the same. No matter whether you come from China or Saudi Arabia or Australia, it doesn't matter. There's one reality that we all exist within. And that's what the template holds. Now, in this video, I want to talk about five. Five things that in a lot of the material shows up in the beginning in some form or another. And the first place that I find it in antiquity is in the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation myth. And that is that on this template, Marduk is the individual that is being called, that is the part of us that is going back to heal our past. So Marduk is the called, Marduk is the hero of the story, and Marduk starts with five beams in his head. We're not going to get into that in a lot of detail. Uh, in, in right here, we're going to just collect some fives here. We go to um, the Gospel of Thomas in the Nag Hammadi Library. There's one that says there are five trees in paradise, and whoever becomes familiar with them will never die or something like that. We'll have a great life. I see it next in uh, Genesis. In the second creation myth, there are five rivers right there. One of them that flows from Eden to the man and then four out from there. We've got five things emerging from where we are. We can look over at Greek myth and see it being done in a different way. In the beginning of Jason and the Argonauts, when Jason, who represents us, Marduk, our earlier self, or no, our later self that is now going back to conquer our earlier self. In this case, um, uh, Pelias, King Pelias and the Jason and the Argonaut story. Anyway, Hera, the goddess Hera is allowed to help Jason five times only. And one of those times is letting him know that he has to get the golden fleece in order to rule the kingdom and that it exists, but it's on the far side of the earth, which represents the far side of his existence, which when we invert the story, it's not outward looking, it's inward looking. You sail backwards, you go back to the beginning of time. We're trying to get back to a place before we were hurt is what's nested in here. The fives are actually a hierarchical mental process that they are using that is how we come about and it is how we heal. They have identified those five parts very specifically that we can still see today and we can interact with them and these stories actually the material when we read through them and we interpret them and we turn them inward and we understand the out analogs which is very complicated it takes a while to get this that what we see is that everybody at the core is teaching the same thing however humans being so tribal they're not going to carry the core it's held in shells that are radically different when at the core they're all the same. So while the majority of humans are going to fight and argue about who's right, they're all carrying the truth that if they turned it inward, they would see it. That's how I see it. That's how humanity works. That's why very few people are going to understand it. There's very few people that go, yeah, um, my tribe is on this planet, not on my section of earth over here we have bigger <laughs> mindsets going on the people that get the core understand more um, this has been told in recent times by jesus many are called few are chosen in many ways are outward looking outward that lead to destruction 
but there's only, you know, on, only the few will call turning inward, going through the narrow gate, turning the material inward. Not many people are going to do that. So we see that nested in the material, that very same teaching there. Not many people are going to do this. The five things right here are very critical, though, because the stories are based on that. But not only that, our entire life is based on that. If we went to the Dhammapada from the Buddha, his teachings, or the Tao Te Ching from... Lao Tzu, his teachings, we will not find a five up there. It doesn't appear in the story that way. However, if you go through and interpret the material, you will interact with all five of those things. One of them is the flow in life, how you flow in life. The Tao Te Ching is called the way, the Tao. That is the flow. This is how your life experience, why your life experience is the way it is. So even though it doesn't have a five in there, it starts right off telling you how you're going to, how, how life functions for us. So, in this video, I want to talk very specifically about those five things because those five things are what all of us need. It, it, they're how we came about, it's how we live our life, and it's how we interact with ourselves in order to change our life. So, my name is Dan Paulson. Welcome to the channel. Let's get into what are those five things. What I'm learning is dynamic, and um, I'm now realizing that those five things are perhaps the most important things to know in this process and how to heal. And um, it... If we were following a monomyth path, there is one part right in the beginning called receiving supernatural aid. And that is what this is right here. The supernatural, there is no supernatural. When you go on this adventure, you need to know what to do. Once you go into your mind, you're going to be defeating demons. So you're getting supernatural aid. When we turn that inward and strip off the analogs, what we mean is, or what is meant is, here is the process you must engage with in your mind in order to defeat the things that you're bringing with you that are painful and cause cyclical pain to continue to emerge in your life. That <laughs> is is what is uh, more there. But okay, there's more to it. It's not just pain. It is everything that we've judged about life. Here's what I want to describe. And you're going to have to somehow be on board a little bit to begin with. All right. I'm going to try to nutshell this. First of all, before we are there as a human, there is a universe, there's a cosmos, there is something in the background that's been going on for billions of years that we're emerging from, and it's working a certain way. It's working in energy and waves and cycles. We emerge from that in what? We're going to be doing the same thing. It doesn't look like that way. We're physical beings here that look like we're having a linear life, but we are exactly emerging from that what is important to know is that as we live through life we're going to see things moving in waves we're going to see things of a certain energy that is that are created that continue to emerge over and over again the reason it's important to know the way the universe works is because we're going to work that way too what that means for us is that things that we have everything in the universe moves in cycles our life is a cycle our experiences are cycles our you know, days weeks months all kinds of times pain emergent things continue to come up over and over again if it's in place that's a universal thing our life will work that same way if you look back on your life and you go my god how do i take care of this look back and go hmm it keeps orbiting it keeps coming back it keeps cycling so it's important to know that we emerge from that cosmic background so we're going to have a cause and effect that we're going to have to see and, and the cycles are happening at higher levels physical levels spiritual levels things that are happening um you know, that don't manifest physically. They just manifest in the thoughts. There's times we are frazzled inside, but we pretend like we're not. So we still have cyclical issues going on. They're just not emerging into the physical world, but they are emerging in our life and they're affecting our experience. So that is still happening. And this is where we have to be honest with ourselves and it becomes a very personal path. Following leaders out there means you're not on the path. Once you turn inward, you got knowledge in yourself. That's it. You're not following anybody. You follow your life experiences with your own level of honesty. However, you know, whatever integrity you want to put to it for your own life experience, it's a very personal thing to heal. One can be dishonest with oneself to put on an impression or one can be honest when, with oneself and uh, you know, put it on impression anyway. We hold ourselves in fear. Okay, let's let's figure out how we came about and why we became what we became and how we can interact with that the best we can. They are teaching that in the material. We have to decode it, but what's happening in uh, Genesis and creation? You know, there's the, the creation of the cycles of above and below the, the orbs. So this idea, we're going to use the sun and the moon 
as representative ideas that there are cyclical things happening in the physical world and in you know in a higher realm um and people look around and go oh this must be a true story when in all actuality those are functioning analogous things that are visible to them that they can use that are carrying the idea that at a higher and at a lower level things are cycling and then there's a creation of plants that have seeds that that produce more plants that are the same nature of their seeds we have cause and effect coming into play right there the the birds the create the birds of the air the plants all of the things that our life experience are being represented by those it's not a real creation it is a real creation of us and those elements are all analogous terms holding that idea and we will see that if we continue to look for consistency in the patterns of cross other teachings but it's pretty easy to see right there oh yeah you got cause and effect happening with seeds whatever happens to you of a certain energy is going to continue to emerge in life of that same energy and it's going to continue to cycle at a mental level and at a physical level you're going to feel it you're going to experience it and other people are going to experience it that is nested right in the beginning all right i need to try and take my wife's advice right now and just plain language this i get so i've i've made my mind go back to the past so much i keep going there and people are like what are you talking about we emerge from that cosmic background and we are going to function on framework of that cosmic background however our life is going to unfold based on what we begin to hold mentally when we're first born we are not even self aware it takes years you know a handful of years before you if you look back on it and start remembering things we were learning we were naming we were understanding things like you know that's yellow that's a banana that's good there are different things we're learning that we didn't know at first you you're completely reliant on somebody else at some point in time we are functioning more we're self-aware we're happy all of that is right there that's a point where we want to get to at this point in time we are living through our higher self except that we are not aware of it we're just living in the moment we're just happy in the moment it's important to say at this point too uh, that we are all different that there are different personalities, there are different brain architectures, there's different interests, there's different sexual orientations. There are things that we are born with in the beginning that we don't have control over. So the things that we're going to become in life are based on experiences that have nothing to do with what we were initially born with. What happens then is we begin to live life no matter where we are and think about this. This is where the mental process begins. We have emotional experiences that are based on glands in our body that are based on the way we deal with life now as we grow and get to a certain point in life developmentally consciously we are now living life and experiencing life and judging life based on our conscious um understanding or comprehension or perception of it at that time we're becoming products of our learned experiences our brains are wiring in accordance with what we are experiencing at that point in time where we're little kids in life you could take triplets and split them around the world and raise them for 40 years in different religions fanatically they will get together and hate each other in 40 years they won't say i'm brothers what's the difference is that real or is that mental you look at it and go that is nothing but mental you could take yeah just think about go look at everybody and and think about where they came from you could take them out of a um, a really functional home and put them in a in an abusive home and they will become something completely different take them out of an abusive home before they're abused and put them somewhere else put them in a different nationality put them somewhere where people speak a different language they won't even know their native tongue what is that we become mental processes we are that what we do consciously so what's happening then is we have our consciousness then that is having the life experience oh i like that oh i don't like that mm. and we are beginning to wire ourselves that wires our brain that becomes who and what we are that becomes our inner being that becomes our eve our our offspring as well our at uh Cain and Abel what we are uh, actually experiencing is that we are storing away electrically and chemically the memory and the emotional state of the experience and we are somehow becoming with with our 
with the qualities we were born with and the things that we are experiencing in life, we are now moving along a course and becoming this person right here. And it's a mental process. We have to know that that is a mental process. It's based in the physical world and physical experiences and emergent from that physical place. But we're energy from the background emerging into the physical world. You see that? Do you make that connection? And the quality of who and what we are and our life experiences are, are based on the way we're holding it mentally. So what we're looking at right now is we've got a consciousness and we're using that right here to communicate with each other, listening, talking. Then we have the subconscious. That's the part that we've stored things away with. And, is, and along the way, we're evaluating. This is who we are when we're not paying attention, when we're not when we're not focused on something and making decisions consciously or something like that, when we're just going through life, this is who we are. Whatever is in the background is emerging. And that is based in the memories and the emotional way we hold the memories of life experiences. Or maybe not life experiences, there's mental experiences. You can hear something over and over again and it, it hurts you. It maybe never happened. They're mental processes. There are people... They can have, you know, two, two brothers and sisters playing around as kids, playing house as youngsters. One can be managed in such a way that, yeah, we were kids. Mom says, hey, kids, don't do that. Another one comes in, oh, you nasty kids, get on. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You, In that process right there, one of them grows up and, and goes, yeah, we were just kids, stupid. Life is good. They, they're happy. The other ones grow up completely dysfunctional anger, hatred, because of something that happened that they were given shame. Those are mental processes. And we are the same way. We emerge the same way. We have to know that, that we are a product of those mental processes and the way that we hold them. So we've got our conscious there and then our subconscious and the way we're holding things. These are going to be good qualities or bad qualities, things that are good for us and help us and that we like, we enjoy or things that hurt us and hurt the people around us, they take us off course, they make us unhappy, all of that are all held with inside of us. So those are there, conscious, subconscious, things that are held. And then what happens? The way you flow in life. That's that one river that goes between you and Eden or the your pathway to the far side to get to the golden fleece. We, in order to get back to that happy place, have to turn around and go through our life experiences backwards to get through there. We've become mental conditioning and that is what we're living from. But this is the important part. Okay, what I want to do is suggest this. Uh, better to do this sitting down someplace and relaxing. Do it later on your own. Do it as a mental experiment. Do it during a meditation, not a meditation where you're trying to clear your mind, but you're trying to build something very specifically in your mind. What I want you to do is to pull back from the earth. Use your imagination. There's a place that we can get to if you're the person that can connect with your with yourself in a, in a way to do this. What you can do is imagine planet earth and society and humanity as something distant that you're detached from. That we're out here living in a kind of a bigger cosmic sort of a thing. And down there is like a rat's nest of life going on. Things happening, things emerging. And from this position, if you get here and you know you're here, um, you, you will know you're here if you can look at that and find a way to look at it without a emotional attachment to it. If you can find a way to detach from that and just look at it as a matter of fact sort of a thing right there, that's what we need to practice move around, go look at other planets, come back and look, whatever that takes. And again, it's a mental process. That's all it is. Close your eyes and do it. It's not real. There are people that do this that think it's real. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, okay, yeah, we know everybody can do this. So it's a, you, use your imagination. Damn, Einstein told us to do that. Yeah, use your imagination. Make things function up here is how you get it, to, how, how we figure things out. Um... All right. Now, from this position out here in space, look down and you can see humanity. Imagine back millions of years, many millions of years, and there's dinosaurs. Life is going on. This planet is, shh, watch it over time. Things come, things go. Impacts psh, happen. Millions of years go by. Volcanoes happening. Plates shifting, all of that. Humans emerging. 
life happening, but everything working in that cosmic, everything cycles, but we're emerging as life. We're eating. Look at the planet. How does how do things live? They, they eat each other. We eat other things. Life lives off of life. We need other energy to live off of, um, but for our existence. We can see that we're emergent from a process and that things are going on down there and that it can be very hurtful. And the closer we get to it, the more we can see that, wow, there's a lot of pain. There's people that are very animalistic out there. And even though sometime later on they've developed in a society and they've got ways of closing doors and hiding that, it's still happening because the way they act when they come outside. You know that what is happening inside because of what is happening outside, cause and effect. We can see people acting out against homosexuality have got those, they're the ones told you should be ashamed of yourself. And now what do they do? They take their entire shame and hurt other people with it. They try to impose that on others. Not that they mean to, they don't have the courage to face their pain. So it's acting out over and over again in big, huge groups. Is it common? Hell yes. It's obviously common. Most of us were part of that as well. It's a matter of whether or not you can go, yeah, we're animals, we're kids, we're growing up for crying out loud. Understand that you're emerging from a place that you would like to leave behind. But in the meantime, you have no control over where you emerge from, do you? You come from there. Go and be yourself. Think of something in your past that you don't want to talk to anybody about. Think of it right now. How does it make you feel? You should experience the same emotion even more intense now than when it happened. You, If you look back on it, you should be able to realize that at first when it happened, there might have been confusion, don't really know. Gradually it builds. It gets worse and worse. It compounds. This is a part of the creation myth. Procreation, getting bigger, getting more raucous, getting crazier till the world needs to be destroyed, all representing up here. Do you feel that? This is the conscious now that is going back into the memory of that experience and is feeling it. Now when it's in the conscious, it is activating the glands again. It's making the emotions a certain way. It feels like an emotional experience, it, uh, a spiritual experience. Well, that one is going to feel like an emotional experience. If it feels good, it's going to you're going to call that spiritual. Uh, they're emotional experiences, all of them based in mental processes. You see how that happens, though. From what, from um, from viewing it from a conscious perspective, you feel it, you experience it. However, if you are this person, and I'm not honestly, I'm not sure if everybody can do this, or if this is a part of that selection process. If you're the person that can connect with your higher self in such a way that you can detach from it and look at yourself without the emotional connection to it, that is what you have to be able to do. Then you do that. Can you do that right now? Sit there and look at it and go, yeah, I know I got to take care of that, but yeah, this happened, that happened, this is what needs to happen. We know what we need to do. We can sit back on our own out when, when there's no reason for the fear to be activated and we can think to ourselves, yeah, I know exactly what I need to do and what I need to let go of and how I need to heal, but I'm afraid and the closer I get to it, the worse it feels. This is, this is actually shifting back and forth from being from living from your higher awareness to living close to the conscious awareness and re-experiencing the memory you can move back and forth between those two can you see that where you can that, that this is what we need to be able to do is move back and forth between these two places we're going to always be in the conscious area at any time we're living fr through that and what is emerging from us is the stuff that we've got put away. So we need to interact with that stuff. That's the stuff that's cyclically being a problem. And we can't do it from our conscious self because it's too afraid. We have to do it from the higher being. However, the two have to work together. It's not going to be comfortable. But the higher being has to be engaged in order to do the healing. When you're reading the material, this is God. The people who walk with God are the people who can connect with their higher being. They're the people that can do this and say, oh, yep, I see the pain. I got to turn inward. This is, this is so shameful. I think people are going to hate me if I talk about it. 
Maybe I've got whatever it is. You've got your own things. I don't have to go into that. It is whatever an individual feels within them that prevents them from feeling okay. And there are people who will just never deal with that in life. They'll put it away. They will wait. There's people that want to go after it. And that's where this material comes in. This is for the people that want to go after it. What you're doing is you're using your higher being to engage in the best possible way with your consciousness. So the higher being and the consciousness are working back and forth. The higher being knows that once I go after my memory, that the consciousness is going to not be okay. It's going to be afraid that it's going to want to get away from it. It's going to cry. It's going to have emotional outbursts. I know ahead of time the conscious is going to do that once I get close to it. The higher being has to be able to recognize at that point that the consciousness is trying to take over and win. This is where we begin to interact with ourselves and understanding that there are parts of us that are bigger than other parts of us. However, the parts that we live in fear of are the ones we tend to give into. And so it takes incredible courage to turn inward to face one's fears. Practice shifting back and forth at this point. I don't want to make the video go too long. Ask any questions if you're interested. But practice going back and forth between being disconnected from it and looking at it from a distance. Hmm, I see me over there. Yeah, I... What a baby. Oh my gosh, yeah, this, that. I can go around the world and see things happening that make me go, oh my God. And I think I have problems. There are many things to look at that help you get outside yourself. That's what I've had to do. Being molested, being abused, having a brother commit suicide um, as, a, as a kid. You know, cut, finding him in the woods after he hung himself, cutting him down. There was a lot of tragedy in my life that had to be dealt with. I was a damn dumb, stupid kid, never amount to anything. All of that had to be worked through. Sometimes it's still, when you talk about the stuff, if you feel an emotional attachment to it, you, it, it still affects you. That's the measuring stick. That's how we determine what, how we feel. When you can talk about things and go, yeah, you know what, I'm all right, then you're okay. If you talk about it and it hurts, this is where the higher being has to engage with the conscious and say, yep, I see what's going on. I see that you don't feel good about it. That means that it's still hurtful inside of you. Go ahead and experience it. Let it come out. Let it emerge. Have that experience. Don't, sh don't turn away from it. Don't hide it away because it gets strong. The more you push it away, the stronger it gets. The more you look at it, the weaker it gets. We can't rid the skeletons in our closet, but we have to make friends with them. They will act out on their terms. If they're enemies, they'll act out that way. If they're friends, they'll act out that way. It's up to us to do that. We made them consciously through experience. We have to now use our higher being and our consciousness to go back and re-examine those things and say, this thing made me feel this way. I have to change the way I feel about it. That's the hard part. That's the forgiveness. The, but you have to understand it's not about the other person. Your life is unfolding, cycling in a bad way because of what you are holding, not because of what somebody did, but because of what you are holding. If you want your life to change, you have to change what you are holding. And you can't change the experience. You can only change the way you feel about the experience, the emotional state. The emotional state of what you are holding is what is causing the cause and effect. That's the planted seed that keeps producing the plant of its nature that produces more seed that keeps it going and it keeps it perpetuating. You have to know that. You have to know the strong man is coming. You know that from the Gospel of Thomas? When you know the strong man is coming, you know, you'll practice destruction, you know, wiping him out before the strong man arrives. That's what we're doing right here. We know that it's coming. Here's a cycle coming. That's a strong man and it destroys my house. This time I recognize that it's coming because things move in cycles. I recognize the nature of it. I know that it's going to get triggered. I know that it's going to emerge. And I know that when that happens, I have to interact with it. We begin to recognize and realize these things. And then we have to keep at it. It doesn't happen quickly. The brain is wired in a certain way. Whatever you sit and feed yourself is what you become. Fast is to the world. Practice going between your higher being and your conscious. The subconscious is going to have things emerge that are not okay. The conscious is going to try to 
be in control because that's how we feel. That's where the emotions come from. We have to know that and then step outside of that and get to the higher being and not let the emotions be uh, take over. If they're derogatory, I mean, if you're happy, of course, you're in the moment. You don't stop and go, why am I happy? You don't do that. That's what we're looking to. We look for oh, what is wrong when something isn't okay. That's when we need to look at why isn't it okay. Then interact with the past forgiving, letting things go, and knowing that that could be difficult and that it could take a while, that our brains are wired, but that the more we do that, the more we realize, you know what, we're emerging from someplace. I'm here. I got what I got. It's time to heal. Don't do, do not do what the secret says. That stuff is just called so what. That's the worst damn advice in the world. Every master from antiquity tells you, you take care of that. That is what you actually go for. You want your life to unfold. You remove the impediments. You don't just drag them along with you, forgetting them, trying your damnedest to get someplace that you got all kinds of anchors in the water. Remove the anchors and you'll sail to where you want to go. Um, you know what, though? Leaving out the hard part is worth millions. Putting in the hard part, that's personal. <laughs> Here's the reality of it. I can't get other people to work with me either. Other, uh, yeah, I think that what I got going on is pretty unique, and it's just over the top for most people. I don't think, uh, yeah, academics don't get it. It's a, it's a it's a it's a mental process that one finds on their own. There's not a college in the world that teaches this. I don't care how much you pay. Have fun. All right. Well, this would be taught in monasteries, probably, or you know, secret societies, or something like that. But it's discoverable. And um, anyway, those five things are there. As you get into reading the Bible, for example, if you are called, you be, you're a part of the story. Moses, I am Moses. I'm the one that's called. Aaron is another part of me. Aaron is the part of me that's going to be doing the changes. Moses knows what to do. That's the part of me that says, I know I need to heal. Aaron is the part that comes in and says, okay, I am going to, you know, affect some sort of a something here, some sort of an action. But Aaron represents that part of us that says, I'm going to go change this energy. I'm going to change what this is. I'm going to create this. I'm going to make that happen. So Moses knows what to do. Aaron takes actions. Um, they're just parts of us and they're working together to defeat that. You know, Pharaoh represents cyclical past, lets you go, you escape. The crossing of the threshold, the Red Sea opens. All of those story components are going to be telling us to turn inward and to do this process right here, but to use the higher being with the consciousness working in concert to heal the psyche so that the flow of life changes from something that is derogatory to something that is better. That is what they're teaching in a nutshell. But it's a big nutshell. Hope the video was fun. Love one another. See you in the next one.